So this is uh, a rain barrel. I've got two of these 333 gallon totes, they call them. Um, up until now I've been using pressure feed basically or hand watering the garden which is kind of just not working out as the garden's gotten bigger and bigger. So I've got the other one back here on the corner hooked up to these two downspouts. My plan is to put two or three of them all together with the manifold and put them right about here and and then run a pump with them. But So I got a pump. I'm going to show you here. It's a sump pump, which I don't know is going to work the best for the job, but that's what the guy suggested at this northern tool. It's a half horse cast iron sump pump from Wayne. It was about a buck twenty. And uh, I'm going to show you my little setup. I've got a check valve, uh, some two inch PVC, sorry, inch and a half PVC, um, that I'm going to run the water up and through. I'm going to have to modify and cut the ring to get the actual base of the sump pump in there. So basically I'm going to put this check valve in close to the bottom there and then uh, run the inch and a half to a bushing to reducer and then run um, three quarter inch PVC to this thingy and then I can hook a garden hose on there so then I can water. So here's what it looks like. I uh, thread taped that onto that. Got the check valve. Got the other inch and a half to this piece here. It's all glued in and cured. Sat for two hours up to here. And that's where either the garden hose will go or I can put that quick snap fitting that I showed you a minute ago. So I'm about to put the pump in the barrel here, but there's a... I realized I didn't think about... I've got a float switch on the pump, which I specifically bought. That'll turn it off when the water's low. But I didn't think about an on-off switch for it. So um, the other thing I'm going to do is run it with an extension cord and just unplug it, which being the rule breaker I am, it says right in the instructions not to run with an extension cord, but I need to because the barrel's too far away right now, so it's going to happen that way. So it's plugged in, and we're going to go. Let's shoot. We have liftoff. It's uh, definitely not quite the water pressure I imagined, but it's working so far. And uh, pulling a lot of air, too. but it definitely works. So after all that work with the sump pump, I just decided that it wasn't going to have the power. It didn't make it to the back corner of the yard, which is really what I was looking for to make it to the fruit trees so that I actually use all the rainwater I have the capacity to hold. I think I have about mm, 900 gallons all around the house but I don't end up using it and a lot of it just gets overflown because I don't use it before it rains the next time so I'm really looking to use a pump to get it out there and I've tried gravity feed and it's just not quite the pressure I'd like and I don't want to raise those barrels they weigh what's 330 gallons times 8 pounds a gallon I don't want to raise that much weight up especially if I'm going to put three of them together so I went from a sump pump to the next uh, logical step, I guess, was a shallow well pump. I wouldn't call it logical. I do want to say that I am not uh, a plumber. I'm not an electrician, so all this stuff is kind of me just uh, trying and seeing what works. And I just want to show people an example of how it doesn't work, because <laughs> I'm pretty good at that so far. But this is a one-horse shallow well pump uh, from I got this one at Harbor Freight they sell it at Northern Tool for about twice as much this was a hundred dollars and uh, it pumps up to pressure in this five gallon tank or five gallon capacity tank um, so that I'll have the pressure I think so they can run a irrigation system or the hose off it um, a couple of things that I needed to figure out before I got to it was 
how I'm going to have the water shut off if the rain barrels have run dry. So that was with the sump pump. It had an automatic float. So finding a float for the, the shallow well pump was kind of a, a chore, but I did find this thing a tethered float switch. Um, it says it's rated to half horsepower, but 115 volt and 13 amps. So this is one horse, but it only pulls 8.5 amps at startup and then at 6 when it's running. So I'm going to try that out see how it goes. The pump was uh, 99 bucks, and I bought the extended warranty because you never know with this kind of thing. And that was 20 bucks, and that tethered float switch was uh, 23 no, 32 excuse me, $32. The other thing I needed to take care of was my rainwater isn't really filtered, and I don't have a... I think I'll do a first flush system if you look that up. It just dumps basically the first several gallons of water so you don't get the debris from your roof, but I'm going to try this as just an irrigation uh, filter. So the water is going to be coming f through a hose right now. I'll do it to PVC eventually, but I just want to try it to get it to work. Uh, water coming in through this filter because it's not filtered in the rainwater. Then we've got the three-quarter to one inch, which is the inlet. So this is one inch here. Water coming in, filling up the tank and charging it. Uh, so that I get between 30 and 60, I think, PSI in this tank. And then it's coming out one inch, going up to a two, reducing it to three quarter. I'm going to cut this. This isn't as long as I'm going to keep it. But then it's basically going over to a hose, a three quarter hose, or garden hose, sorry, uh, adapter here. And I'll have, uh, I think, a some sort of manifold, you know, the uh, spigot with four heads on it that it shuts off. So we're going to try that next. So we've I got to set up the float inside the rain barrel so that it shuts off when it gets down to a couple inches. Uh, I've got to set up the, the water and uh, we'll see how it goes.